Hey guys, welcome to Avery's nine month update. Avery is nine months old. She's only three months away from being a year old. Time is just flying. As is all my videos of updates with Avery, I do need to say we're about, she's about nine and a half months now. She's a couple days away from being nine and a half months. I had to wait until she had her nine month pediatrician appointment because I wanted those updates for you guys. So that's why we're doing it a little late. Well, and all my videos have been late. But anyway, this is Avery at nine months old. So we'll first bring you her stats because I took a screenshot of what the pediatrician showed me. So Avery is 28, almost 29 inches tall, putting her in the 86th percentile. Ever since Avery was born, she's just been super long and it's just continuing, which makes sense. She's nine months, but she's basically already outgrown nine month clothes and she needs to move on to 12 month clothes because she is so tall. As far as weight, she is 19 pounds even, putting her in the 63rd percentile. So her weight has always been a little less than height um, percentile was but 63rd percentile is still like a really good weight and then her head circumference 43.5 centimeters I don't think that means much to you guys but that does put her in the 38th percentile so Avery has always had a really um, small head ever since birth um, obviously we're still trying to correct it with the helmet I'll get into that later um, but I think like her head being a little misshapen probably doesn't help um, the when they size it and just it looks really tiny compared to other kids. Okay, so some new things with Avery this month. When I look back on between eight and nine months, two things come to my head, which is not a lot happened and then a lot happened. So <laughs> it's funny. I feel like not a lot happened with her developmentally. I kind of feel like she was... I don't know if it was just because she was mostly sick. She got RSV and then she got a whole another cold like two weeks later. And so I don't know if that kind of just like made her a zombie, but I just didn't feel like she did that much developmentally wise. Um, but then a lot of things happened to her and about her throughout the month, if that makes sense. So some things that did happen to Avery, she now knows how to shake her head no. Um, she can shake it and she shakes it all the time. No, I don't think she understands what it means, but she does shake it no. We try to get her to shake it yes, she will not. She only shakes it no, but that is something new. Also, very rarely we can get her to scoot backwards. Uh, she does not scoot forward, she does not crawl, but um, she will scoot backwards every now and then. So that's something new. <laughs> With Avery, she is still not sitting on her own. We've been working with her ever since her six month pediatrician appointment when her pediatrician said she should be sitting a lot better than what she was. We've been working with her and she still refuses to sit. Just like the past, it was like right at the end of nine months, I noticed a difference in her sitting and she sat a lot better supported. Um, it felt like her back was a lot straighter and she just had a lot more control, core control. So I do see it getting better. However, she still is not sitting, which is not good because by nine months, she should, by nine months, she should be pulling up on furniture and we can't even get her to sit. It used to be that we would put her in the sitting position and she would just push back the whole time. And so we had to like put her up against like our ottoman so that she couldn't push back. It was like that solid surface. Um, so she doesn't really do that anymore, but she does tumble forward all the time. So we're working on it, but she is not sitting. She's not pulling up and she's not crawling. She will um, balance on her belly as she has been doing for months and months and months, which we call it her skydiving pose. She will do that. She will kick her legs. She can roll anywhere she wants to. I feel like in the past month, she's gotten a lot better with rolling where she wants to go and she can like roll multiple times in a row, but she's not crawling, unfortunately, not walking. But she does love to stand. She's very strong on her legs and will stand for a good bit of time, supported, of course. But, um, so she does that, but 
she's not sitting, which is unfortunate. Avery is still continuing to teethe like crazy. She constantly has her fingers in her mouth. She'll stick her whole hand in her mouth. We recently got her a new teether toy for Christmas and she loves it. It's like a little penguin teether toy. If you've seen any of my videos, you'll know what I'm talking about, but she like holds it and then it's got like two ears on the end. She just chews on the ears. She loves that teether toy. She's teething like crazy, still has yet to have any teeth, which is pretty shocking because by nine months, my oldest had five teeth and my second had, had one tooth, but she has no teeth, absolutely none. And she's been teething for months. So I'm hoping she's getting some, bless you, I'm hoping she's getting some teeth soon, but so far, no teeth at all. This past month was a big challenge when it came to feeding Avery anything but milk. For some reason, like the whole month, all she wanted was milk out of her bottle. I sat her down two times a day, every day. In the mornings, I would do uh, oatmeal, which is just like her milk mixed with like an oatmeal mix. And then in the evenings, I would feed her baby food pureed baby food and it was all different types vegetables and fruit and sometimes combined and she refused to eat any of it she wouldn't like the most I could get were maybe like one or two bites of each thing and then she would just like refuse the rest of it so it was like super frustrating um, I don't really know why she was. I thought like, oh, maybe it's because she's teething, which I guess maybe it could be, but she still hasn't gotten any teeth. So how close is she to getting teeth? I don't know. I've been feeling in her mouth. I don't feel any teeth. Um, I looked online and I guess sometimes like if babies' minds are like developing a new skill or something, like they are less interested in wanting to eat. So that could have been it. I don't know. It was just... It was a really tough month of trying to get her to eat anything and she refused. When I did get her to eat something and she like semi liked it, it was pears. Pears definitely seemed to be her favorite fruit. We introduced a lot more fruits to her. She definitely likes fruits more than veggies, but um, yeah, pears were definitely her favorite. Avery is still holding on to her third nap <laughs> as of nine months. She does not want to let it go. So she'll do three naps a day. Uh, she goes, she wakes up at 7 a.m. goes to bed at 7, 7.30 p.m. Uh, she's a good sleeper sleeping through the night. Can't complain about sleeping. She loves her sleep. Avery absolutely loves her bouncer. If she's ever upset and we don't know what to do to make her happy, we just put her in her bouncer and she is a happy girl. She loves bouncing in that thing. It's so cute to see. Also, toy-wise, she loves any crinkle toys. She loves like chewing on it or just like feeling it with her finger. She loves crinkle toys. Avery is still only saying da 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 da. We're trying to work on mama or anything else, but so far she just wants to say da 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 da. No words yet, it's just like babbling. Avery definitely gives her biggest smiles to Anthony and I. Everyone else tries to make her smile and she just kind of stares at them. So she definitely prefers Anthony and I for sure. She also loves watching her brothers of course they're just entertainment to her she loves watching them run around she tries to follow them but she can't it's hilarious um, I'll input a video here if I can find it the boys were like literally running circles around her before bath time the other day and she wanted to join them so bad and she just couldn't figure it out it's so cute to see <laughs> So this month was a big month regarding a Avery's helmet journey. We finished the first helmet and then we were kind of unsure as to where we were gonna go next. She was like right on that edge of being fine or needing a second helmet. So we finally went to her last appointment uh, with her first helmet and then they looked at it and just kind of decided that she still has some asymmetry when it comes to her ears and her jaw maybe I think. 
So they did recommend a second helmet to us. Of course, it was totally up to Anthony and I, but we decided to go ahead. We actually were able to get it in right before the new year started and our insurance benefits um, renewed. So we were able to get it at a pretty low cost. Um, still was expensive, but not as expensive as it would have been in 2024. So we did get her a second helmet. She is currently wearing the second helmet. We're about three weeks, three weeks today of wearing the second helmet. She's doing really well in it. Um, we've had one appointment so far since she's gotten the new helmet and they've liked the progress that she's made. So we're gonna wear it. They quoted us four to six weeks on this new helmet, so a much shorter time, but who knows? It all just kind of depends on what her head does. So we will see, but for now she is still in the helmet. She had about a 10 day break in between helmets and it was so fun to see like her without her helmet all the time. But unfortunately we are back in the helmet game. It does seem to be helping, so I'm glad we got it. Um, it also helps protect her head because she rolls pretty violently. She'll just be on her belly and then all of a sudden like roll really quickly to her back and sometimes she thunks her head. So it is nice having this helmet to protect it. But yeah, unfortunately we are still doing the helmet game. So hopefully we're almost done with it, but who knows. We like to call Avery our potato baby <laughs> because honestly, she just likes to lay around and observe people. Uh, she doesn't talk much. She doesn't really make too many emotions. She's just kind of a potato. She's just kind of there and we just kind of joke about it um, that she's pretty easy, chill, go with the flow third child, which is refreshing. Uh, last thing I wanna talk about, and I've talked about it in my previous video, uh, we got some not so great news at Avery's nine month pediatrician appointment. As I told you guys, by nine months, Avery should be sitting on her own and she should start, uh, she should be pulling up on furniture. And unfortunately, Avery is doing neither of those things. So when we brought up those concerns to the pediatrician, he actually recommended that we go through a program called Help Me Grow. It's in every state, in every county, I think. Um, it's a state program, so it's free. That's good. And they are there to help kids that are def that are behind developmentally, whether it be speech or gross motor skills, fine motor skills, things like that. They will help you um, either give physical therapy or give tricks, tips and tricks to help get your child on track. So that was kind of disheartening to hear. Avery is behind developmentally in her gross motor skills. She seems to be a, on track uh, ver with verbal skills. Um, and things like that. She's picking up objects, reaching for things. However, gross motor, she's just not there. So that was disheartening. Uh, we have been in contact with Help Me Grow. We have her evaluation appointment coming up in about a week. Yeah, it's a week from today. So we will have more information on the next, on her 10 month update on how that goes. They're gonna evaluate her and kind of see if she qualifies for any services. I'm not exactly sure what they're gonna recommend. Like I said um, in the beginning of this video, we have been working with her since six months trying to get her to sit and nothing seems to be working. We did get a sit me up from Fisher Price and it's like you put them, you put the kid in it and it literally helps them sit. So we've been putting her in that. We've been having her sit as much as we can. It's kind of hard. There's three kids and busy life, but we're trying. Um, she's just, I think she's just gonna do it when she wants to do it. You know, every kid um, develops at their own pace. Avery might just be a little slower, I'm not sure. So that was the first bad news we got from the pediatrician. And then the second bad news, I wasn't really expecting, but he had some concerns about Avery, which we've been noticing ever since she was born. And the concerns are, her head is misshapen, which we know we're working on it with the helmet. But in addition to her head being misshapen, she has a very large flat spot on the front of her head. And flat spots in the front do take a while to um, close up. They could take up to 18 months or I've even heard of two years to close. Her flat spot is very large. Um, and then also down like the middle of her forehead, she has a very um, big divot 
like where the two plates came together like there's just a really big divot going all the way down her forehead in addition she also has a concave chest so it, it's sunken in and we've seen that since birth also she's had a heart condition she's just had a heart murmur pulmonary valve something um that was present at birth and then couple all of that with she's behind developmentally with her gross motor skills. The pediatrician is wondering if maybe there are some genetics in play as to why she has all of these weird characteristics that aren't normal. So he brought up getting us in touch with a genetics a person office to have them look at Avery and see if maybe there's a reason that she has all of these characteristics maybe they all are signs of some genetic disease that she has it was pretty upsetting to hear about that obviously I've never been down this road um Grayson and Porter never had any genetic concerns I was tested when I was first pregnant with Grayson for genetic um problems that I might have in my blood that I could pass on to my kids. And the only thing that they found uh, was cystic fibrosis, which then they tested Anthony and uh, he did not have the cystic fibrosis gene, so our kids cannot get it. But other than that, um, they didn't have any concerns with what was in my genetic makeup. But so I know I do know that some genetic diseases kind of just develop on their own while the kid is being like formed in the uterus. So it could be something that's like new all in all. So I don't really know. Um, but of course, I was upset about it. The pediatrician told me not to worry. OK, sure. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, so he did put in a referral to get us in touch with a geneticist. I did get a call back just a couple days ago from the geneticist. And they're on a six-month wait to get into their office. Yeah, so we have an appointment set up for late June. So unfortunately, we're just going to kind of be in the dark for six months, more months of something might be wrong with Avery, something might not. Who knows what she's going to be like in six months from now. Uh, maybe she catches up on everything. I don't know. Um, I'll definitely still keep the appointment because if she does have some genetic disease, it would be good to see what it like if it is something that we would have more answers and would know of things to look out for that might affect her later on in life i'm hoping that if she does have a genetic disease it's not a serious one and it's one that doesn't really affect her life so we'll see but yeah pretty disheartening information from the pediatrician this appointment Unfortunately, Avery is behind, and so we're going to work hard and try to get her to catch up and hope that this geneticist appointment goes well in half a year. So, unfortunately, yeah, it was not good news to round out the start of Avery's nine month of life. So, anyway, sorry to leave you all with bad news, uh, but Avery is fine. Obviously, she doesn't care. She's just been whacking this table this whole time. Usually, she gets kind of grumpy and... Uh, over these videos but she's just kind of been happy today so that's i feel like this is the first video since she was like a newborn that she's just been chill <laughs> usually she's like over it but anyway it's a long video sorry i just wanted to update you guys with all that information a lot of this is technically for like the 10 month old video but I just wanted to keep you guys in the loop. So definitely follow along with my regular vlogs because I'm definitely gonna keep you updated. We've got like an upcoming cardiologist appointment. Um, she'll turn a year, so then we'll have a new pediatrician appointment. We've got this help me grow thing going on. And then in six months, we're gonna go to the geneticist. So I'll definitely keep you guys updated and make vlogs about all of it. But as for now, this is Avery at nine months old. Can you say hi? Yeah, hi! Say I'm nine months old! Say hi! Also, at the end of nine months, I forgot to mention this earlier, she did learn how to wave. She doesn't do it all the time, but she will wave, like, with her hands. It's super cute to see. Hi! You're just so sweet. Yeah. She loves looking at me and Anthony. But anyway, 
Uh, that's gonna be it for Avery's nine month old video. Let me know down below if you guys have had any um, experiences meeting with a geneticist. Is it all that bad? Should I be thinking the worst? What should I expect? Um, they said it's gonna be like a two hour long appointment. So uh, it'll be a lot. <laughs> but anyway, I just keep rambling. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> Anyway, like and subscribe to my channel, and we will see you guys next time. Bye. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Say mwah, mwah, mwah. Say see you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye.